It is an honor to introduce to you Holly Roberts. Holly has exhibited nationally and internationally and published three monographs of her work. The combination of paint and photography is what makes her work so distinctive. Solo exhibitions of Robert's work have been held at institutions such as the Museum of Photographic Arts in San Diego, and Eleanor D. Wilson Museum of Art in Hollins University in Roanoke. Her work has been included in group exhibitions at Center Georges Pompidou in Paris, Art Institute of Chicago, Art Space in New Haven, Los Angeles Museum of Art, and the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. It is a pleasure to have Holly teaching in the painting department here this January. Please join me in welcoming Holly Roberts. Wow, I really filled up here. Um, can we have the lights down? Um, just in this, you know, 21 slides I think that I brought in, I sort of wanted to give you a little bit of background of how I started out. Um, and that was basically by taking photographs and applying, heavily applying oil paint over them. Um, I, I'm sort of a quasi-photographer in that I really use photographs, but the quasi part becomes because I've never quite gotten it. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> uh, my brain just doesn't seem to like to understand shutter speeds and all of that. Um, but I've always had cameras, I've always had dark rooms, now I'm a, I do everything digitally. But what I would do is take a black and white silver print photograph, process it, and then use it to paint on. And the, my work tended to be pretty autobiographical. Uh, this particular piece has to do with my older daughter when she was a baby. A horrible thing to have an artist's mother here crying and your mother's just snapping away, taking pictures. Um, and, and I think a lot of what I was doing was trying to figure out the complexity of the world around me, being a mother, being a woman in this world, all of that. Um, and so this piece came out, it's called Red House. Uh, this was done about, in about 88. Next slide. Oh, I, never mind. <laughs> Good, Holly. Um, as I worked, I began to combine more and more different kinds of media. Um, and I was also going through a kind of a crappy camera stage with, that's a, with a two Ks, um, meaning that I would find very bad cameras and, and then take photographs. And there's a wonderful kind of quality to them that I think a lot of photographers go through. Um, and so these are s snapshots of my husband and I that I would then cut out and then glue onto board. So I was beginning to change the format of the photograph, it just wasn't the photograph, but it was, it was becoming a different kind of a shape. Um, this is called King and Queen. Uh, it, it really has to do, I think, with my idea. It's a sort of a Jungian reference that when you are having dreams or memories, often the king and the queen tends to have to do with who, how you see yourself as an archetype. And then this second one in the series was called Two Old Dogs, again from the same series of photographs of us looking directly into this cheapy plastic camera um, glued onto a panel. You can just barely see the edges of where the photo was. And then um, I went ahead and painted over it and came up with this image. Well, an important thing to note is that I don't know where I'm going when I start, and I try and get my students to do that too. I tell them it's what we don't know that's always much more interesting than what we know. In uh, 2004, I had some sort of something happened, and I just stopped working. Only it wasn't as direct as that. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to stop working. It was more that uh, I was going to soccer games and cleaning the house, and, and I just was avoiding going into the studio. And I've ha always had a really pretty rigorous practice, but for this year, I just stopped painting. And I, um, I learned about digital cameras, I learned about how to scan things, and just going from absolute no knowledge and swearing I'd never use digital imagery to actually becoming a convert. So when I started back in 2005, I realized that I had changed. And I went from painting with oil paint over the photograph or the built up image to painting with acrylic and then taking my own photographs and, and reconfiguring them and coming up with an image, a new image that way. And it took a while. I mean, it wasn't just didn't happen. It was suffering and struggling and trying to figure out what I was doing and coming up with all sorts of wrong roads. But finally, it came together. And that's the way I've been working now for, um, gosh, um, 
12, 13 years. Um, so these are all photographs I've taken and then recombined. So um, the, the ducks, um, the heads were a dead duck that my dogs dragged into the back porch and I photographed. The body of the birds is when I fly, I photograph as I fly into airports or over different areas. And then of course the, the head is a student of mine and then the birds are something I'm just fascinated with, but birds that flock on trees. And it's called Headed South. And, and the other thing that changed was I, my work stopped being so autobiographical or about my personal world and sort of what was going on and began to be more about the bigger world around me. And I think the bigger concerns I had, I think we all have in terms of stuff just going to hell, you know, the environment, politics, all of that, and a, a reaction to that, my way of trying to figure it out again. I did a, a residency in Roanoke, Virginia, and um, I'm, I'm from New Mexico, so it was just wild to have all these forests and green and just stuff that I'd never been around. So I ended up photographing lots of trees, um, lots of kudzu, which was kind of interesting because it was quite beautiful, but it's this horrible weed that's taking over. And this, uh, I think the kudzu is in the upper part of her body. The trees, of course, were these wonderful maples and oaks, and we just have elm trees and pinyon trees in New Mexico. And, uh, but this is really about, um, uh, 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 I did two. I, I, it was called uh, Forest Mother and Forest Father. Forest Father, which I didn't bring in, but he's pissed. He's angry at what's going on. And Forest Mother's sad. She's depressed, which I think is the way males and females tend to deal with stuff. But the forest is going. She's upset. You can see the, oops, the hands down here um, sort of begging her to, to pay attention. Those were the hands of a folk artist named Wallace Simpson who lived, he died recently in North Carolina and I stopped by, to, I love folk art and I stopped by to see his work and meet him and he had these wonderful hands that, you know, he was probably in his 70s when I met him and he, he allowed me to photograph them and then I used them in the image. And that's a magpie up there for all you Colorado people. <laughs> What's bad birds? I've always been really fascinated with the whole Adam and Eve story. I just think that's an incredible story that that's when all the bad stuff happened. Um, and there are different interpretations uh, that it was Eve's problem, but if you're a feminist, you can look at it differently and realize it was all Adam's fault and then there's the snake. But the thing that we never talk about is really the snake's involvement. And this is called um, Snake Daughter. This is the daughter of the snake um, that caused all the trouble in the Garden of Eden. And she's just mad at her parents. She's shaking them and she's saying, come on, I've, I've just had it. Um, so this is really about, about that, this sort of extrapolation from Adam and Eve to now the, the snake daughter. I'm a cyclist, um, a pathetic cyclist, uh, meaning that I, you know, ride to get exercise and, and it matters to me, but... Um, uh, something that I do, but not, not in the way some people do it. Um, but I was in Mexico and saw this bike made of bamboo. It was just beautiful, totally didn't work, but it was so lovely in that Mexican way of things. And I took a photograph of it and then had to figure out how to incorporate it into the image. This is called Bicycle Rider. The other big thing in my life before bicycles was horses. So I sort of loved being able to marry the two. Um, to have the horse have the bicycle contained within and have it be that beautiful Oaxacan bike. I did a series of um, three heads. Um, uh, this first one is called Big Head Worrying. Um, they, were, they were kind of a, a departure for me because I made them, the, the only photographic information in this one are, are the teeth, the eyes, and the ear but I made them using negative space, using material that were around them. And they came very quickly, which I think most of us know never happens. You know, you suffer and struggle and you get something. But in this case, the three sort of fell out. They're quite large. I think they're about 48, well for me large, for Roberto, just chicken feet. But, um, but anyway, so there were three of them. This is called uh, Man Worrying. This is called Man Thinking. And I use dictionary pages um, to define the head. And then the eyes are actually aspen burls from here. Um, they're just so eye-like, you don't even think of it until you realize they're not really eyes, but aspen leaves. Um, and then the last one is man listening. And in this case, I was using the, the way the paint comes from the ear to define what it was all about. 
but they're these just wonderful sort of totemic heads that express all those things that we go through. Um, I've recently, this is a huge departure for me, um, I've been um, working within my computer using Photoshop. And I've been used, I've used Photoshop for probably 20 years, but very badly, very pathetically. I had about four tools I could use, and that's what I did. So recently, within the last year or so, I began to expand that knowledge. And I've actually become skilled enough to be able to, to work within the computer to do these images. And I'm, I'm actually working in the same way, except that it's all happening in the computer. These live in the computer. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm starting with a photo, in this case, a photo of a horse, and then coming in and adding layers and deleting them and scratching back in. So it's quite exciting, and I don't know quite what's gonna happen with them because they're so different. They can be any size. I can do one, I can do 20. Um, you know, what the heck? So I've just started doing these. It's called Backward Rider. Another uh, digital image, again, all based on the photo, um, but um, stuff that you can do to it. There's a kind of a tacky program called Corel Paint, and it's, uh, it's sort of like the Walmart of Photoshop's world, and they have all these wonderful textures. So the, the mane and the tail are this wonderful kind of hairy texture you know, that, that you can do. It's really fun. This is uh, another one, uh, and again, because I'm using a mouse or I'm using a tablet, my line is very funky, which I, I love, because it's a kind of line I, I can't draw like that anymore. I'm, I've done it too much, it's too sophisticated. So when I use the, the, the tools I have, I'm, they're very sort of fragile, beautiful lines. Um, again, this was based on a photo of a coyote and me that I put together. But then it turned into an image of uh, a little dog that I got about a year ago. It's called Woman Walking with Her Dog. The other juncture I'm sort of headed down are uh, transfers, and that has directly to do with teaching. We do that a lot in my workshops. Um, transfers are just really tricky. You never quite know what you're going to get. There are all sorts of different ways to do it. Um, but what happens when it works is they're, they're quite wonderful. So there's always this big thing of, oh gosh, are they gonna work? Am I gonna lose the head of the coyote? Is it gonna transfer? Um, but again, trying to marry the painted background with the a, with a photographic, I can't mess with these photos. They're what they are, and that's kind of scary to me too. It's like, whoa, it's real, you don't, I can't hide it, I can't cut it out, I can't paint it, it's, it's what it is. So this is um, called uh, Buck Being Followed. I actually took the picture of this buck when I was riding my bike, and he just went right in front of me in the bike path, and I was able to get my phone out and photograph him. This is called Crow Standing. Again, another transfer. Man with Birds Leaving. And in this case, I took an image from an older painting, um, sectioned him out, did the transfer, and then I, I had the photographs of the birds. So there's this sort of feeling of him standing, watching in terror as these birds take off. And then this is something that I just came up with, just started doing. Um, my new, my new whatever, it's sort of what was Roberto saying, we make these little tiny adjustments and, and it's just heart, you know, your heart is beating and you think, oh my gosh, what have I done? But what I started doing was using color photographs instead of just black and white. And in the process of doing that, I discovered a new way of doing a transfer so that I could take the image and then transfer it onto something else. So what this is, is it's a transfer over a, a page of a, from a chemistry book. It's called Dog with Spots. And I'm, I mean, this color thing is huge for me and it's such a, not a big deal, but still. And then this is the original painting that the transfer was taken from. So it's flipped because when you do a transfer, you get the, the mirror image of it. So this is the, it's, this is bigger. I took in the computer, shrunk it down, did the transfer. This is uh, another um, uh, using um, colored paper that I painted for the bottom for the waves. This is called horse boat. So again, just a combination of all the different photographs and different materials that I have available. This is called um, Medusa, or, or snake rider, parentheses, Medusa. I, I love snakes, I'm afraid of them, but I love them, so I'm always photographing, um, unfortunately, dead ones on the side of the road. And this is the last one, again, sort of uh, uh, very different for me. It's all color photographs. This is called um, Woman with Her Own Coyote, um, and that's me. Um, <laughs> 
I was wearing one of my husband's big parkas the other day, and I thought, oh, it's just like my painting, you know, because I was kind of this square, blocky person. And then uh, um, th those are my legs, the, the photographs of them, and then these wonderful sort of square pieces that resulted from the painting. And that's pretty new. I just got it varnished and sent off to the gallery, and uh, so that's about as new as, as you can get. So that's it. So thank you all for coming.